This is your dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. Starting from humble beginnings, Nick has been beating the markets for over two decades. He shares with you his take on the profitable trades that will have you moving towards financial freedom in no time at all. To see an in-depth review of his track record and much more, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com. Welcome, and this is your daily dose of daily market wisdom with master trader Nick Santiago. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's July 14th. This is show number 75. Well, Nick, we got slammed yesterday afternoon, all because uh, an irrelevant state that is failing uh, faster than anyone could believe uh, rolled back uh, some of the reopening. Yeah, California did it again. What can you say? Uh, we call that the golden state, I believe, right? <laughs> well, so, they've killed the goose that laid the golden eggs, that's for sure. Yep, sent the markets tumbling late in the session. And um, again, I, I believe it's the fifth largest economy in the world. I could be wrong, maybe it's the seventh, but it is pretty big. And uh, when you look at... Uh, you know, the power that governor has rolling back everything there. It's just it just blows your mind away sometimes. And the markets didn't seem to like it. But please note that this all occurs during an options expiration week. So Friday will be options expiration for the month of July. This is what you have to look for. This kind of stuff each and every day. It's going to happen throughout the remainder of the week. Yeah, they get their orders from their masters. And a lot of their masters are on Wall Street. Let's face it. This is, uh, this is the way the world works. This is the way the power structure is set up. And the politicians are subservient to their masters. They might appear to be the ultimate authority, the ultimate arbiters, but in fact, they get their marching orders daily. I agree 100%. I couldn't say it any better myself, so we'll leave it at that. But it goes on each and every month. And if you haven't seen it by now, how many days have we been doing this podcast, Kerry? Well, it's been a while. It's show number 75. And if you figure that's three, it's almost four months, Nick. Yeah. So we've seen a, a few options ex, expirations now uh, the week of. And I've been, I, I probably am the only person on the earth that talks about this stuff. And again, you just see the game playing continually. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's an important uh, point that you're making there, Nick. Because it used to be, once upon a time, the mainstream media covered options expiration, and it was a big deal. It was a market event, and they had the triple witching hour, the quadruple witching hour, the quarterly, the monthly, all these things. Now, like you say, nobody covers it, and yet it becomes the reason and the, I guess, the tail wagging the dog when... Wall Street goes into its scramble to ensure that the maximum number of options contracts expire worthless. Yeah, I mean, these guys with computer technology now, and this has been going on for ages, but uh, they can figure out where the small retail options trader places his bet, and they're going to put that strike price, they're going to put the stock where that strike price isn't. So uh, I see it all the time. It, it never seems to fail. And uh, again, I'm still amazed by how efficient they are. But these institutionals, institutions, they can move the markets any way they see fit for three to five days. It's been going on since I've been in this business, and that's a long time. And uh, it, I guess it'll go on till the end of time, too. Yeah, I'm sure you're correct. Uh, this is the way the game is played. Well, anyway, we're starting to see bank earnings, and uh, and the stocks are responding accordingly, huh? Well, JPM started out pretty strong today. Then it rolled over. It's only up 22 cents now. But you had stocks like Wells Fargo get absolutely hammered today, down five and a half percent. Now that's a twenty-four dollars stock, so it's only a down a dollar thirty-nine. But it's still down five and a half percent. Citigroup today got whipped a little bit too. That's down two point seven percent. But um, the most important out of all, all of them are really J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs. So those are the two that I'll follow. I'd like to really see where J.P.M. closes today. It was really strong at the start of the session. It was trading up around uh, $99.95. It since has rolled over a little bit, now trading at around $98. So it's going to be interesting to see where this thing closes. But if J.P.M. can hold up well, and this thing gets above $99.50, especially on a closing basis, that will be very, very bullish. All right. So we could be seeing a buy signal in in JPM, huh? Yes. All right. So gold and silver, they backed off in yesterday's session. Still finished up. I mean, uh, 
gold itself on the spot over eighteen hundred dollars, which is key, key, major, major technical point there, psychological more than anything else, but it is major. And silver broke through the nineteen dollar mark on the spot market, and they're up again today. Where they finish is anybody's guess, but they finished low yesterday. They finished weekly, and yet they woke up this morning, and now they're they're up. Up a little bit there, you know, a pretty good yeah, amount. Yeah, we have a flat day in gold today, but like you said, um, we, they did roll over a bit yesterday. Um, silver today is actually a little bit lower on silver futures, down about uh, 1. 1.18%. So that's a 23 cent decline, but still a trading at 19.56 an ounce in silver futures is pretty good. Um, I'd love to see them pull back, Harry. You know, I've been saying on this program, they're too high for my liking at the moment. So I'd love to see some consolidation going sideways, or even if they want to pull back a little bit, that's fine with me. But I would, I'd be getting into them on any pullback, and I've said that before, and I'll say it again. Um, you know, again, this is not going to uh, – this, this run is not over for gold, but mm. a, a pullback or a minor correction is welcome. Hey, and, and we actually got some comments on that uh... – you know, people trolling you a little bit on the YouTube channel saying, hey, uh, Nick, get it, getting off his ass and buying gold and Newmont stock yet, question mark. <laughs> well, you know, I don't buy things when they're high. And, um, you know, I buy things when they're on sale. But if you go back and look at what I've done this year, um, it's been pretty impressive on on our gold purchases and our silver purchases. So, you know, again, that that's my goal is to basically make money. It's not to buy things when they're expensive. But, I mean, I take, I've taken, you know, two nice GDX trades, one for 14 uh, and one point fourteen point three percent, another for eleven point one percent, and I took a, a nice SLV trade for you know almost nine percent. So you know, do the percentages there? So there, the markets aren't even up that much this year. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, I just wanted to point that out because everybody's got their opinion, and hey, they can have it; it doesn't matter. But we like to hear from you, so make sure you post on the YouTube and email us kl at com. What about those other sectors? So we're seeing uh, the Dow Jones uh, is up, the Nasdaq's down a touch. Uh, what other sectors? We, yeah, so we, we have the Russell 2000, which represents small cap companies in the United States. That's up about nine tenths, a little over nine tenths of one percent. So that's a good move. The Russell shows very good strength. But what I'm seeing today, money going into energy. Remember a few days ago, I said, energy, I'm starting to like that sector. Get ready. And, you know, everybody laughed. Uh, but now energy is getting a nice little bid today. We have the XLE up about uh, 2.77%. Uh, you're looking at uh, refinery stocks, which I said is a group I like. They're catching a nice bid today as well. Uh, even the oil services names, they're up 4% on the OIH. So there's a good move there. We're also seeing some money uh, going into uh, this, the consumer goods stocks like uh, Hershey and Clorox and Colgate and Unilever, um, Church, uh, Church and Dwight, you know, Procter and Gamble, money going into that area. Telecoms, money's going in there. We're seeing retail stocks today hanging in there pretty well. XRT is up a little bit there. So I, I love when I see the money come out of the cloud software names, which have been, which has been the hot money in NASDAQ. And now it's going elsewhere. That's broadening, um, a lot of the, uh, of the market sectors, and, and that's where you could get a little bit more upside. If you take a look at um, some other areas, you got Caterpillar today up almost 3%. That's a big stock moving higher, so really good move there. John Deere up 2.6%. Honeywell, another industrial name, up 2.34%. So good action really outside of cloud software today. So I, I like what I'm seeing today. I like what's uh, going on in the market, and again, um, you know, you have to really, you know, take a broad stance and you just got to remember it's options X. Um, you know, the games will be played this week. Yeah. The games are always being played, but especially here and especially, you know, in the summer, one question I want to ask you, Nick, cause volume we're in July. Generally, this is the time of the year where volume tends to slow up a bit and you tend to get sluggish markets. We haven't exactly been seeing that, have we? No, we haven't seen that. Um, in fact, there are days where the volume dries up. In fact, last week we had some light volume days. Yesterday the volume was pretty good. Today it's a little bit on the lighter side. 
Generally, when we get into the month of August, though, the volume usually gets very, very light. I'm not sure we're going to see that this August, though. Uh, but I will say, you know, that's what we call it, the summer doldrums. But um, this time around, with everything that's going on, all the news, the coronavirus uh, chatter that's happening now, we'll, we'll, we'll see. But this is going to be a turbulent and, and a high-volume year overall. Yeah. So does volume beget volatility or does volatility beget volume? Chicken and egg question. Uh, you know, they, they kind of run in tandem with each other. It's hard to say which one is first, which one is second. But I'll tell you, anytime you get a big sell-off, expect higher volume. All right. So, so and when you see those sell-offs on higher volume, that's a cautionary sign, isn't it? That is always a cautionary sign, especially when you're at new highs. Um, but right now, when you're holding trend, um, you could get high-volume days. But a lot of it, unless you get follow-through, is probably more so um, just due to options expiration. Yeah. Yeah, and then, yeah, like you said, the uh, big players are masters at manipulating the chessboard when it comes to these times of the month. Uh, when we start seeing this August, you know, doldrum set in, and there will be some because, you know, big vacation month, although I don't know what a vacation is anymore, Um that's the whole definition of a vacation has changed. Uh, some people feel like a vacation is going back to work after being trapped with their uh, families for months, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, a lot of people right now are doing these little local trips. At least that's what I've been doing as well. A lot of little beach vacations in, in Florida here where we live, you know, so close to. Um, so I think you'll see more of that. I even saw some neighbors of mine now doing the whole uh, RV thing, right? They're getting Winnebago's and stuff like that. But if you get any kind of calm here, the flights will – people will start getting back on airplanes. I'm, I'm pretty confident of that. But right now, you know, uh, it, it's been kind of uh, more localized. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we'll leave it at that. Make sure you go over to inthemoneystocks.com. Take a look at Nick's trading record. See what the latest trades be got. Uh, talking about Pfizer and a couple of others. And there's a lot of valuable info in there to help you develop your trading career. We'd love to hear from you. Use the Twitter feeds at ITMS, at Nick Santiago 01, at Kerry Lutz. Email us your questions, your concerns. We'll get to them shortly. KL at KerryLutz.com. That's it for today, Nick. We will pick up tomorrow. Sounds good. This concludes another episode of Daily Market Wisdom with Master Trader Nick Santiago. For more information, go to InTheMoneyStocks.com and see Nick's full trading record or check out the Twitter feeds at ITMS and at NickSantiago01.